Hi, I'm Mike Shea with Baltimore Grassroots Media. Could you uh, talk about how you were able to rule out the, the controlled demolition or any controlled demolition hypothesis uh, and, and also address whether you looked at um, some of the um, studies that Stephen Jones did about uh, the evidence of uh, thermate um, possibly being used to uh, cut through the beams? Yeah, as I said before, we, we, we conducted this investigation with an open mind, and um, then we decided on those of the possible hypotheses that would be really credible enough for us to evaluate further, and controlled demolition was one of them. And the way we proceeded to do that is, of course, there are many ways we could do it. Uh, you know, we could have done it the way controlled demolition is actually done in practice, where charges are placed on multiple columns, uh, which would imply a huge amount of charges to be placed. We instead decided, what is the worst case scenario? Meaning, what is the minimum amount of charge we could use to build this bring building down? And when we looked at that, we said, well, if column 79 is, is in fact what caused this building to come down under fire, Let's assume we have a, a charge that can be placed directly on column 79, which, of course, most people would not know is the critical column, um, just because that was not, we found that, found that out after the analysis of, that we did. So assume that we actually can do that. And as a result of that, we found that even the smallest charge would lead to an incredibly large sound half a mile away in an urban setting which would be as loud as a gunshot blast, as loud as an engine of a jet plane when it's flying, and as and 10 times louder than being in directly in front of speakers at a rock concert. Yes. Um, I think that the idea that thermate uh, cut through the beams, it wasn't actually an explosion that caused the beams to cut, so that could probably be done um, a lot more quietly, right? Yeah. As Stephen Jones is working. Well, that, the, the issue of of uh, thermate did not even uh, reach, um, the, in our judgment, uh, a level of importance sufficient to, in fact, do a detailed analysis. We could rule it out fairly easily for several reasons. Um, one, um, in order for a thermate reaction to take place, there has to be uh, materials. And of course, building materials have all of the things that are required for thermite or thermate. And if you looked at the amount of thermite or thermite that would be needed to build this bring building down, you would have had to place about 100 pounds of thermite of right in proximity to the column, and it had to have always adhered to the column because what thermite does is actually it melts the steel. So somebody has to keep pushing it so that the thermite continues to be sticking to the steel, this vertical column, until it actually uh, collapses. Uh, and in order to get that kind of amount of materials into the building and, uh, and to actually place it and for this reaction to take place is unlikely to have actually happened. Uh the part of that that, that um, I have trouble with is that if you say the building came down without any explosives at all, uh, then uh, isn't it possible that you wouldn't need a, a lot of explosives to bring it down, if it came down with no explosives at all. Uh, the part of that that, that um, I have trouble with is that if you say the building came down without any explosives at all, uh, then uh, isn't it possible that you wouldn't need a, a lot of explosives to bring it down, if it came down with no explosives at all? Repeat your question. If you're saying the building came down with no explosives whatsoever, uh, isn't it possible that it could come down with a smaller number of explosives than you estimate? No. Uh, the big difference is fire is a persistent uh, uh, assault on the structure. What? The explosives and the fire. Well, let me put it this way. There's a very elegant and straightforward to understand proceed method that causes this building to come down. And that's the issue of thermal expansion. It's very straightforward. It's based on sound science. And it is consistent with all the observations we have. And it's consistent with the fact that the fires were on the lower floors of the building. But it's never happened before, right? 
but it's, it's the physics is consistent, it's sound, it's been analyzed, and we have the results, and we, we are very comfortable with our findings. We're going to move on. Do you have a question? Do you know what? Um,